And we're back. Continue with part two, 10 years, 07 to 17. I'm Chris. I'm Mark. So more with the Crumble Hoax. Yes. Best of the last 10 years. All right, here we go with two and one in all mentions. What's your two? My two is the Grand Budapest Hotel. Ah. I love, love this movie. Directed by Wes Anderson. Uh, he's a guy that has his very unique uh, vision. And a guy, on some of his movies, I always felt like it was like a near classic. But this movie, it's like all his great ideas from a, from his long career now. Put it all into this movie, and it's so great. And Ray Fiennes is just extraordinary. Like, it was the role he was born to play. So funny. Not nominated, was he? No, and I don't get it. I don't get that. Um but it also is an it has the uh, the parallel to World War II, of course, obviously in there. So uh, the history buff in me likes that part as well. So something for everyone. Number two for me is No Country for Old Men. My one and two, and possibly three, but my, I would just say that's not not so much Whiplash, but my one and two are not just best of the last ten years, but some of my favorites of all time. No Country for Old Men, when it first came out, literally stopped me on my tracks. I, I, I saw it at home. I didn't see it in theater. Mm-hmm. And it was one of those movies that started, and it grabbed me. And for some reason why, I remember I had to leave and go somewhere. And I couldn't wait to get back to finish it. And then I finished it. And then I think I watched it over. Yeah. And it's stuck with me ever since. Uh, I knew immediately... That Javier Bardem was going to win Best Supporting Actor. He was maybe at that point one of the he was like immediately like one of the top ten villains of all time mm-hmm. after watching that movie. It's so well crafted, it's so well made. It's a absolute film school of how to make a movie. Every actor actor is brilliant in it. Every choice is the right choice. There's, it's literally a movie that I cannot pick anything that's not well done and well made. It's 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 pretty much a perfect movie. And like, um, if being an aspiring filmmaker, it's one of those movies that I always look to and mm-hmm. go to. It's absolutely perfect. Um, just Coen Brothers, I thought had made classic movies, and then they made this one, and I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> this, they found another level. Yeah, and they haven't been back since. But oh my god, if to make as many good movies as they did, and then add this to it, it's just incredible. One of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah, I, I, I really like the Coen Brothers. I like my favorites are like Martin Fink and The Big Lebowski. By the way, I, I love those. Shout out to Raising Arizona. Mm. Shout out to Raising yeah. Arizona. That's a, that's a strong. All right, number one. Uh, my number one is There Will Be Blood. Ooh. It's in my top twenty Ooh. of all time. Uh, I love it. Uh, the Grand Budapest Hotel is in the top forty. So you just kind of frame of reference. Wow. There will be blood. Um, Paul Thomas Anderson, director. Uh, Daniel Day Lewis, the top cinematic performance of all time in that movie. Outstanding. Has a J- John Huston vibe to it. The whole movie does. Uh, my understanding is Daniel Day Lewis actually studied the way John Huston talked. Yeah. Um, he's the famous director. If you don't know. Uh, folks watching. Um, anyway, he had a very unique way of speaking mm-hmm. and, and patterned his own performance after John Huston. So, well done. Love that movie. Uh, guy strikes it rich on oil and his personal life uh, isn't doesn't quite go uh, where you'd think. So, it's a kind of a cautionary tale. Well, you have excellent choice in number one. My number one of the past ten years is There Will Be Blood. Yay! And I think you probably knew that. Uh, there Will Be Blood is a movie I'm, so, I'm somewhat obsessed with. I, it, when they first both came out the same year, No Country for Old Men and There Will Be Blood came out the same year. Yeah, 2007. And at, and at the time, I thought No Country for Old Men was the better movie. And uh, at the time, I was like, I was glad it won the Oscar. And, and I remember saying, like, well, if There Will Be Blood wins, I won't be, I'll be just as happy. But I kind of leaned towards No Country for Old Men. But as time has gone on, I've become obsessed with... Well, there will be blood. Mm-hmm. I'm obsessed with the music. I'm obsessed with the way it made. Yeah. I'm obsessed with the characters. I'm obsessed with the lighting. Uh, Danny Lewis' performance is like 
it's it's head and shoulders above so many other performances. Mm. See the Cary Grant special that we did. Anyway, uh, the <laughs> it's it's just it's it, I'm I'm kind of obsessed with no with uh, There Will Be Blood. It's a movie that I play repeatedly. Sometimes I'll just go and watch the scene with Paul Dano in the bowling alley. That that twenty minute scene, yeah, is as good as any scene ever ever made. Yeah, the milkshake scene. Um, it's uh, it's one of those movies where I would love to have a conversation with Paul Anderson, and I think the question I'd ask him is like, were you aware, like, were you conscious of the magnitude of what you were making, or did you just make what? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You you wonder it's, if they knew they had lightning in a bottle. I want to know if he knew. It's like did. Yeah. Did did you know? Did he know he was paying the Mona Lisa when he painted the Mona Lisa? Mm-hmm. Did he know he was making something like this when he made There Will Be Blood? Right. It's just I would just love. That's the first question I'd have. It's just absolutely pitch perfect. Um, and 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 thinking outside the box too, bringing in the uh, guitarist for Radiohead to do the score. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Greenwood. Uh, excellent. Excellent. The, and the the the, the 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 sequence where he goes and he's staking out the pipeline all the way to the coast. Mm-hmm. It's a fantastic sequence. The way the music is done, and the editing style, whatever. And it's all of this is a guy surveying and measuring out. But the, with the yeah. music and the pacing, and the editing is absolutely thrilling. And it ends right. with that classic shot of him hammering the stake on the table. <laughs> which is just it's I, I i'm obsessed with it i think the way some people were obsessed with citizen kane to be completely honest with you there will be blood is in my top 10 it's like i think it's number six actually mm-hmm. of my top 10 favorite movies of all time and there's a good That's chance awesome. it could go up as time goes on because to me it's the citizen kane of our lifetime to be honest with you it's oh i i love that movie like i said top 20 for me all right, honorable mentions, a diverse list in no particular order. Just some movies I'd be remiss if I didn't mention. I'm just going to give you all five of mine. All right. Give you five. The Social Network, about the founding of Facebook. The greatest, maybe one of the, the maybe the best revenge film. Like, to me, that movie plays like a revenge film. <laughs> if you watch it that way, it even plays differently. Okay. Like, I, I'm a big believer that you watch movies with a certain frame of mind. Like, if you watch Empire Strikes Back as a father looking for his son, Completely changes the dynamic. Sure, sure. Social Network, watch it as a revenge movie. Uh, Edge of Tomorrow, Tom Cruise's sci-fi now classic when it came out. I loved it immediately. thought it was the best movie of that year. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's just grown in cult study. American Hustle, another one from uh, uh, Mr. David O. Russell in my top ten. Uh, American Hustle's great, great performances. The editing choices are just brilliant. Uh, and then my two that will surprise you. The best comedy of the last 10 years? Step Brothers. I know what you're thinking, but my God, I love that movie. I adore Step Brothers. It's one of my favorite comedies of all time. Another movie I can just watch. And then to represent our current year, and I know it's too early to put it on there, but I don't care. But when I saw it in IMAX, I was flipping. Kong Skull Island was so freaking good. That was when I saw that movie. I was reminded of why I love movies. It was made perfect. It had action sequences. The helicopter sequence in Kong Island is second to none. It's that's why you make movies. Mm. Totally love that movie. So that's my honorable mentions. What are your honorable mentions? All right. Um, let's see. Let's start with Rango. Animated. Western, really, uh, directed by Gore Verbinski, yeah. voiced by Johnny Depp. Fun movie. Uh, I, really, I love stories where a guy has to like find himself, and there's like a larger scheme of things. Uh-huh. You know, I, I like uh, I like those kind of stories. Sucker for that. All right, uh, next, I like. Um, I would recommend. These are no order, but uh, the road. Right, no order. The Road, 2009, directed by Ooh, John Hillcoat. That's a good one. Uh, I envy starred, that one. Uh, Viggo Mortensen. Yeah. Love, love this movie. It's it's post-apocalyptic dra- uh, drama, but from a more, more realistic point of view. Yeah, definitely. No zombies, but more survival. 
Excellent movie. If there if ever has been made a realistic post-apocalyptic movie, that's the one. Mm -hmm. That's what it would really be like, is that one. Yeah, that one's awesome. Uh, let's see. That's two, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, what else? Oh, Room. Um, not the B movie, The Room, but Room, 2015 film directed by Lenny Abrahamson and uh, starring Brie Larson. She won the o o Oscar for Best Actress. She was also in Kong. And, uh, yeah, she was in Kong. And <clears> at <throat> any rate, halfway through the movie, there's a five-minute sequence where the little boy in the film is trying to escape. And I literally was out of breath. I mean, it's breathless. So nervous. Right. It's like one of my top 20 favorite scenes in movie history. Just so breathless. And the music, yeah. uh, building, building, you just don't know what's going to happen to this kid. Love it. All right. Next, um, I would go with... Um, well, you know, I, I still think Her The Hurt Locker was a really good movie. A uh, war drama uh, directed by um, Catherine Bigelow mm -hmm. and really got Jer Jer Jeremy Renner on the map. Right. And it, it's a... There's something really... Uh, honest about that movie. I love the scene where in the end he's going shopping and he's so out of place. I love that yeah. scene. The contrast between civilian life and combat. Um, let's see. Lastly, what have I not mentioned yet? Um, well, Lincoln. Steven Spielberg film. Danny Day Lewis again. I love that movie. Uh, Notice, I must note there's no Cary Grant movies. Well, he's been dead for like what? 20 years? Uh, see 25 earlier, years? See earlier episode for that reference. Goodness gracious. Abraham Lincoln, or Lincoln. Lincoln, yes. Um, really a great movie detailing the last four months of his life. Great performance by Danny Day Lewis. Excellent direction by Steven Spielberg. Timely Jones in a supporting role. Excellent. Uh, so you got a strong cast. Um, and I don't know how you make a movie interesting out of passing a bill, but the movie does. And it quote, sounds boring, but it's but it's excellent. And the, and the quote to Hillary Clinton, just a master class on politics. Remember that from the debate? Just a master class. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, that's your real answer. That was your real, that you as a human being, oh God. I'm trying to like edit those things out of my head. Oh my God. Uh, but there you go, there's, there's five honorable mentions. Well, I don't know, I think all, all said and done, it's been a pretty good past 10 years. Some of the, we always... You know, we're kind of whiners in a way, so we're always wishing there was more classics or whatever. But I, I don't know, it's a pretty good crop. Dark Knight was one you mentioned. That was I had some others yeah. on my list that that we, I want to go on and on about. You know, the Hangover and Glorious Bastards, Wolf of Wall Street, the new Mad Max, the Star Wars has come back. Right. Uh, the Nice Guys is an under underappreciated movie with Ryan Gosling and uh, Russell Crowe. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, anyway, there's a whole bunch of... Blue Valentine, one of my favorites. So there's a ton of movies. I could have made, made a 20 list. Yeah. But anyway, uh, pretty good past 10 years, I think. Yeah, just the last Not classic. Of, not all time, but... I just think the last two years have been a bit of a drop-off. But they're poised for a comeback. I well, think. Well, I see, here's the deal. Not to get political... But uh, the Hollywood always does better when there's somebody they don't like in the White House. <laughs> That's which is true. True story. All right, let's should be taken up for another episode. There you go. So with that.